So, as I said, I will be speaking about what is the scope of civil engineering in general and uh, how is civil engineering at DOAS. So, before I go to the actual topic, I would like to briefly tell about uh, Ramaya. Uh, Ramaya is a very well known name in Karnataka and uh, very popular down the South India. Basically, it is uh, a brand. It is well known in both uh, education and healthcare. Now, this Ramaya actually runs several institutes, and uh, one of them very popular is Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, which is in short known as RUAS. So, RUAS is the umbrella under which different faculties are housed. Okay. So, RUAS uh, proudly offers more than 70 programs which run across uh, 10 faculties or some of them are also called as schools. So, it runs across several faculties and schools. So, as I was telling you, RUAS is one brand under which all these faculties are there. So, civil engineering department comes under faculty of engineering and technology, what you are able to see here. Okay. So, we have these uh, 9 to 10 faculties. We have faculty of management and commerce, which houses the MBA programs. Then we have pharmacy. So, all the related uh, courses are taught in those faculties. And Faculty of Engineering and Technology, it caters to the engineering disciplines. And one of them is uh, civil engineering. Now, this is a pictorial representation of the establishment of RUAS. I'll be very briefly discussing about this. So, till 2012, we had uh, different uh, institutes like uh, Ramaya School of Advanced Studies and so on. So all of them, they were merged and uh, then in 2013, RUAS was established. So as I told you earlier also, these are the various faculties, the various branches of RUAS. Now, coming to uh, what civil engineering at RUAS does, what are its programs and courses? So we offer one undergraduate course, which is uh, named as BTEC in Civil Engineering. So we offer a BTEC degree and uh, it spans for four years. So each year is divided into two semesters. So totally it runs across eight semesters and the uh, intake for this year, it is 30. We also run some postgraduate courses, four, in fact, four. So we call them as master's degree, MTech in uh, structural engineering, MTech in construction engineering management, MTech in sanitation engineering and waste management. Now it has been renamed as environmental engineering and management, and then transportation engineering. Again, these are the details about the PG courses, how exactly we handle them. Okay, that is the detail. Coming to the actual uh, theme of my talk, it is uh, scope of civil engineering. Uh, before going to uh, civil engineering, let us first look into what exactly is engineering. So, Sumer, can you uh, answer this question? What exactly is engineering? Okay, I shall answer it. So, engineering is nothing but a profession where the scientific knowledge is used to develop some application. Now, for example, we know that science tells us the property of uh, nature or property of water. For example, science tells that water flows from higher level to lower level. So that is explanation of nature and its laws 
basically is done by science. But in the engineering, what we do is this law, we use it for our application. For example, a simple road, when you lay a road, at the center, we provide some paper and we use this uh, law of nature to tell that because you have certain uh, elevation at the center, which is called camber, the water will not stand on the road, but it will flow to the sides. So that simple law, which was explained by science, we have used it to develop our uh, roadways where we are using this property and we are seeing that the water does not stand on the road and uh, the road is water free. Otherwise, the roads get damaged. So engineering is the practical application where we develop some practical application. So its role is to direct the resources of nature to the use of mankind. Okay. So we have many disciplines of engineering. One is mechanical, then aerospace, then automotive, then we have computer science, then uh, artificial intelligence, and of course, civil engineering. Civil engineering is a profession, or it is a professional engineering discipline, which basically deals with the design and the construction of different structures. So these structures can be as simple as a house, or it can be bridges, or it can be canals, or it can be dams and buildings. But don't think that civil engineering means it is only construction. No, it is not just construction. It is beyond that. So civil engineering basically deals with the civilians or the civil uh, infrastructure or the civil life. So it can be the buildings or it can be the structures or it can be building the entire city itself or towns. So infrastructure is nothing but it may be the water supply or it can be transportation. So if you see it, sky is the limit in civil engineering because you name any project, civil engineering expertise is needed. So we make them happen. Now, civil engineering uh, has led to green revolution in India. Green revolution became a reality in India because of the expert services of civil engineers. For example, you know that the rainfall is not even across the country. That's why irrigation came into picture. So if you want to irrigate, you need to construct some structures. You need a dam, you need a, a system of canals to distribute the water. So vast areas of dry land, they have been successfully irrigated and uh, this has led to the green revolution in India. So it gives vast scope for irrigation by constructing dams, canals, and uh, its distributors, or you can say branches. Also, the construction of the power stations uh, with the help of which we are able to tap our electricity or dams, uh, which lead to the construction of turbines and power generation. So all this, it is possible with the help of civil engineers. Uh, not only this, now daily we use water, we generate a lot of waste, so we have sewage treatment plants which provide us with uh, the treatment of this used water and uh, one treating the sewage and converting it into uh, let us say less hazardous material which can be disposed in the environment. So this also requires the expertise of civil engineers. Also, for our movement, for the smooth movement of people, we need a lot of roadways, railways, and uh, 
in the nowadays metros it has come up in metro rail it has come up in different cities like the bangalore then we have uh, chennai kochi recently then delhi so they also the paths and the roads what we travel they are all civil engineering projects in fact most of our structures which may be big or small large or small they definitely require the help of a civil engineer it can be in the planning stage it can be in the designing stage or it can be managing the whole project or it can be all these things put together now civil engineering is called as the mother of engineering in fact in the olden days the first engineering which was born was military why because those days wars were rampant so they used to temporarily build bridges for the warfare move across the other area demolish the bridge and move on so that is how military engineering came into picture but after military engineering it was the civil engineering which was born now civil engineering is very vast we have different sub disciplines so one of them we can say it is survey another we have uh, building materials and just naming a few we have many more actually another is uh, structural engineering geotechnical engineering uh, then uh, we have the water resources irrigation then we have transportation engineering environmental engineering and so on let us see very briefly what exactly each one does now here you are seeing some instruments and you are seeing some people who are using the instruments so they are measuring they are measuring the earth's surface so they may measure the area or they may measure the length for example you want to lay a roadway so you need to survey before and during also so survey is basically defined as the art of map and plan making because before you want to start any construction you have to survey your area then you can develop a plan all those things we have some guidelines which will be following to develop the plans map is on a huge scale for example map of a country that way or map of bangalore map of karnataka that way large area plan means relatively small it can be for a simple building or a shopping mall so that is a plan so survey it started with the remotest of instruments to the most advanced so survey maps they provide the relative position of various objects both in the horizontal and the vertical directions now you can see the there is survey instruments which we will be using in our survey uh, right now we have a very advanced instrument which is called as a uh, total station where you can not only do the survey you can also store the details about the various uh, survey what you have carried out in a file okay so total station is the latest then uh, civil engineering also takes the help of electronics like we have electronic distance measurement where uh, they are able to measure the distance uh, electronically without actually where, wherever it is inaccessible even without going there with the help of signals which are reflected back and uh, we calculate so we have advanced equipments in civil engineering so these are some of the equipments what we'll be using computer level and so on now uh, when it comes to building materials we have thousands of building materials for example let us say the flooring the flooring itself you have a synthetic you have uh, let us say linoleum or it can be you know, marble or it can be granite so you have a lot of choices and as you are aware the basic need of mankind for a civilized society of course it is shelter so we will be using lot of building materials 
and we will need to know the properties because if you want to choose a particular material for a particular structure, you need to know its properties. So all this will be um, learning. Not only that, um, every day new building materials are being uh, researched. Okay, we have seen a lot of improvement in all these materials. So we have thousands of materials. Then, uh, as you are aware, once cement was developed, concrete came into picture. Actually, we had the lime concrete earlier, but the exhaustive usage started about, uh, after cement was invented. But uh, it's also a tragedy with cement because uh, we know that cement is also contributing to air pollution. So I'll not go into those details, but as I told you, we have thousands of building materials which are available and this particular section or course will be studying those details. Then we have another field which is called construction technology where we'll be uh, going about the managerial skills, uh, how to achieve economy. Economy means how can we save some money and how to do it in an efficient ma manner. So all this will be dealt with construction technology. So it can be the planning and the execution of the designs for different types of structures in civil engineering. Then we have another very important uh, discipline, civil engineering, which is called structural engineering. Now, for example, you want to build a bridge. So you know that some part of the bridge will be water. So you need to know how much water pressure is acting on the uh, part of the bridge which is in contact with water. That is one aspect. Next, uh, because there are no structures nearby, you will have enormous wind blowing and the wind pressure also it has to withstand. So it will be subjected to different loads. Then it will have its own weight. That is another load. Then earthquake may occur in that area. So earthquake load is another area. So all these loads we have to uh, arrive at them. So how to arrive at these loads? That will be doing in structural engineering. Not only that, how the structure will behave under this load. Then how to design what should be the size. So all this will be doing in structural engineering. So construction of tall buildings, bridges, dams, it needs the basic knowledge of what we call structural engineering. So this is a figure about the world's longest bridge in Shanghai. Then these are some of the world's tallest buildings. We can say they are the signatures of civil engineers. Then this is Burj Khalifa is nearly one kilometer in the vertical direction. And these are the other tall structures which are very famous. Then these are the tallest statues in the world. So in India, 182 meters, so tallest statue, statue of unity. So all this needs the expertise of civil engineers. Now coming to another important uh, branch in civil engineering, it is called as geotechnical engineering. So geotechnical engineers, they basically are more into the study of the rock and the soil properties to determine whether it is suitable to support the loads coming on the soil. So if you want the structure to be safe, we need the expertise of geotechnical engineers to ensure the safe and secure structures. So not only that, all the every structure it rests on soil. It can be the pavement or it can be a tunnel or it can be an urban dam or earth retaining structure. So the soil is very important. We need to know whether it can sustain the load coming from the structure. So we also have what is called as water resources and irrigation engineering which is again where we'll be studying about the principally in civil engineering, it will be only water. 
So we'll be studying about water, the canal system, then the conveyance of the fluids, the stability of the structures and so on. Then transportation engineering. So this involves the construction of airports, then ports, harbors, then roadways, then uh, suburban and urban road networks, parking lots, and very important, traffic control signal systems. So it involves, it's also a huge field which involves the design and analysis of all this, highways, railways, airports, and so on. And environmental engineering, which is making a lot of noise nowadays, it deals with the supply of pure water, then treatment and disposal of wastewater and solid waste. And also, we have a lot of air pollution problems. They also need to be resolved with the help of environmental engineering. So environmental engineers, they'll be dealing with all this. And another is very important. If you want to build wonderful cities and towns, we need to have some technical knowledge where we'll be learning in architecture and town planning so that we can have aesthetically designed structures. Now, uh, before going further, I just want to introduce how exactly civil engineering design was. So I, I'd like to tell you about some of the laboratory facilities which are available in our uh, Ruas campus. Uh, we have a concrete and highway laboratory. Then uh, we have basic material testing laboratory where we test the materials. Then survey laboratory. I showed you the instruments earlier. Then the geology, computer aided laboratory, geotechnical engineering laboratory, and so on. So these are, uh, in brief, some of the laboratories we are having. Then uh, we also have some special equipments. These are some very rare equipments which are not available everywhere. They are used to perform fatigue tests. And also I'd like to proudly tell we, some of our MTech students, they have uh, done some group projects where they have developed some uh, equipments. So this is one such. It's a semi-automatic plastic machine, which is developed by our own uh, MTech students. Then this is also impact testing machine, which is developed by our students for testing the slabs. This is another device activating system for dynamic analysis. And this is a smart waste segregator, which is developed by our students as a part of the project. Not only that, we have also developed some low cost purifiers to treat the grey water. So, and another, this is another instrument, which is Internet of Things enabled or IoT enabled data acquisition and warning system so related to earthquake it is. Then this is an equipment again fabricated by our own students uh, to study the potholes on the roads. So we have done some wonderful group projects. So this is a wind turbine which has been developed by our students. It is basically uh, installed on the highway and uh, we can find out it can generate power and this battery what we had used, it can light a 20 watt street lamp for 48 minutes because on the highways enormous wind pressure will be there. So that uh, energy we can tap the wind energy, we can convert it as electric energy. So this instrument has been developed in that context. Then we also have some uh, student and staff exchange programs with uh, other countries like Russia. So St. Petersburg University of Civil Engineering and Architecture, we have a MOU with them. And these are some of the exchange programs when they came to India. Uh, these are the uh, picnic uh, as well as the study tours, what we had arranged. The various site visits, they visited our facilities here, they attended our classes, and they, they were also taken to different 
industrial visits. So these are some photographs of the sale. Also, uh, our BTEC and MTEC students, they visited Russia uh, on the same context regarding the staff exchange and student exchange program. So they are, we were exposed to how technology is there at Russia. So that is one thing. Not only that, we arranged a lot of guest talks. I just added one guest talk uh, by Dr. Chandramouli. He's speaking about retrofitting. Then uh, we have done some consultancy works. So this is for investigation of black spots at Ballari district. Then we have arranged some site visits. This is to the Energy and Resource Institute, which is in Bangalore. And this is our students visit to Russia. So now these are the placement details of our civil students at Ruas. So these are few of the companies where they are working, something like Bentley Systems, KMB Projects, Daijus, MyCaptor, Infosys, Eagle Ribar, then KMC Projects, and just naming a few, Civil Aid, then Prestige, the MindTech Solutions, then even in Bangalore Baptist Hospital, they are working, where the environmental engineers are working. They come up placed in Atkins, which is a very prestigious uh, company, Atkins Global as well as Atkins India. So these are some of the companies where our both the PG and the UG students have been placed. So these are few more companies where our students are working. So then uh, these are few more companies like Multiplex in Dubai. Then uh, Soba developers also we have. They are also some are placed. Then in Amazon, then Aditya Birla Captain and so on. So these are few of the companies. Even in BBMP, then uh, Karnataka Power Transmission, then Akshaya Infra Consultants, even in Karnataka Housing Board, we are working. So these are some of the placement details. Now, um, I'll just brief what is the role of a civil engineer. Earlier, what I showed was, what are the various disciplines in civil engineering? Now, I'll be just telling you, what is the role of a civil engineer? So, he has to do the planning. He has to involve in designing, then construction of houses, and apartments, office buildings, commercial establishments, and uh, after surveying, he has to also prepare uh, the estimates and the plans, okay? And he has to imagine different types of structures and he has to build them. So don't think civil engineers means only field work, not necessary. Nowadays, we are also depending on a lot of software. So we have another session in the afternoon where uh, Dr. Srinivas Padala will be briefing you about what is the role of software in civil engineering. So uh, don't think that civil engineering means only the field work. You need to have the field knowledge as well as you can work in the offices at well. So civil engineer will be in the planning and design of transportation facilities like highways, railways. So all these things already have told you about this. So we'll not only be uh, designing, we'll also be involved in the maintenance of the structures. So he'll be involved in the construction of dams and canals. He'll be involved in sewage treatment lines. Then for construction of uh, pollutant, um, uh, the structures which can control the pollutants, then uh, tanks and dams, then river navigation and flood control projects, then uh, for structures which are related to purification and supply of water. So all this will be involved. Okay. So this is the role of the civil engineer. Now I'd like to conclude my talk with the uh, what are the career options for civil engineers? Basically, uh, we have three parts. One is we can do field jobs. In field jobs, you can either opt for a private sector or a public sector or government sector. Government sector is purely run either by the state government or the uh, central government. Public sector, sector 
they have the participation of the board. Then you can do research. Uh, you can go into the research field as a scientist, maybe in ISRO or BAR or DRD. Or you can go into management field because civil engineers can also act like managers. Another option which is available self employment. OK, that is the best option. So the jobs are available in private sector, public sector and government sector. So private jobs it can be building, design, construction and real estate. And it can be infrastructure related. It can be highways, airports, then uh, water resources in dams, hydraulic structures and in private sector also for construction planning and management. Then in public sectors, we have uh, huge players like Airport Authority of India, India then uh, Hindustan Aeronautic Limited, NAL, then we have NTPC, and so on. Even oil and natural gas emission. So we have so many uh, opportunities. Then in government sector, it can be the central government sector, or it can be the state government. In central government also you have what is called as the central PWD, that is public works department. You have the railways, you have opportunity in water resources, even in building, and so on in the state government sector. So these are the government jobs uh, which are available for civil engineers in India. So this is called as uh, Indian Engineering Services. In the next slide, I'll show you what are the possible uh, recruitment opportunities. So we have uh, the public sector undertaking based on the GATE score. We can enter these fields. Without GATE score, you can enter into these fields. Then uh, the jobs directly which are related to our degree, we can be a CAT technician or we can become a consulting civil engineer or we can be called as a design engineer or you can be called as estimator or nuclear engineer, a site engineer, a structural engineer based on what is your role or job. So again, in Indian engineering services, we have this. Uh, this is the scope. So it can be central water engineering or survey of India service and so on. So this is about IES, Indian engineering services. Again, in uh, government sector, following uh, are the absorption of capacities, you can say. So we have municipal corporations where few civil engineers are needed, gel boards or gel nigam, or it can be Delhi Development Authority. When it comes to Bangalore, it is Bangalore Development Authority. So something like that. Or it can be New Delhi Municipal Corporation. There also we have scope, Metro Rail, then Indian Oil Corporation, Public Works uh, Department. Airport Authority of India already I showed this. So these are the various fields in government sector which can offer jobs for civil engineers. And our own business is always there. And for BTEC and MTEC, uh, these are assistant professor or you can become a senior civil engineer or a project manager or a construction manager or a consultant or a researcher. So we have scope in educational institutions. We have an infrastructural engineering or we also have scope in project management because managing projects is not a joke or we have in real estate or we also have in residential building construction. So these are some of the top notch companies uh, which absorb the civil engineers. So it can be LNT, Chapurji, Paloji or Punch Lloyd or Infosys Limited, or Coastal Projects, Altatech Cement, and so on. So I just named a few of the companies uh, which absorb civil engineers. So these are some of the upcoming infrastructure projects uh, which have been defined by our Honorable Prime Minister, where there is again scope for civil engineers, like it is the Sagar Mala project, or Bharat Mala project, or Setu Bharatam project, and so on. So we have scope definitely in civil engineering 
So this is what I just wanted to convey. So in case of any doubts, you are welcome.